Hey guys, what is up? Yeager262 back again with another vehicle showcase. Today I'm looking at the M60A2 Starship, another one of the least played and most hated vehicles in Armored Warfare. This MBT is truly unique, and that's going to be the theme for a lot of these terrible ones. Is unique in real life, limited service, limited action scene in history and so they don't really fit in here. This vehicle was used as the test bed for the Sheridan's 152 gun launch, 152 millimeter gun launcher. And because of that, it did see some action in Vietnam. However, there's only one recorded via video that was shot of an M60 Starship doing a beach landing. And that's really the only visual combat record we have besides photographs. And so it's it's got an interesting place in history. It was developed right after the MBT-70, which is a premium tier 6 vehicle in this game and performs quite well. So just to pop up on comparison before we get to stats and a little bit about why this vehicle is so bad, is that it has the same exact firepower as a Sheridan, but it gets one and a half more seconds of reload time, which lowers its DPM by 400 points. Now that's not really terrible, it does get one millimeter more penetration on average, it does get more hit points, it gets better armor than the Sheridan, but that's expected because it's an MBT. It's max speed, 49 kilometers an hour, only gets 25 degrees of hull traverse, which is better, at the very end I have the normal A60, or M60A3, which lower DPM, it's not a great tank, faster, worse than the other two, worse camouflage rating than both of them, worse view range, or it's just a bad tank. But it's there because it is technically a main battle tank, and it's the main battle tank that was used as a basis for this one. Otherwise, it wouldn't make this comparison because the M this MBT really doesn't compare to anything except for the MBTs both 70 and on the KPZ-70, which are the same tank. And I'm put them in because not only are they premium, so they're going to perform a little bit better, but they're also a higher tier, so they will perform way better. It gets a maximum deviation of 0 0.14, which is better than the Sheridan. Aim time is the exact same. Tier traverse is a little bit slower. And so why does this tank so bad? Two reasons. One, it uses the same gun as the Sheridan light tank. And why is that bad? Because its reload is longer, which lower, which means its DPM is lower. It means that it cannot snipe, it cannot damage targets unless it's up close. It's a shotgun vehicle, just like the Sheridan. Now why is that a bad thing? Second reason, it has the mobility of a brick and the armor of the M60A3, which means no armor, no mobility. So it's a tank that can't get up close to enemies very fast, it's a tank that can't get out of situations very fast, it doesn't have the view range of the Sheridan with the light tank, it doesn't have the camouflage to hide once it fires this massive gun. So you will get spotted all the time. You will get shot and shut down way away from your enemies. And it's like, well, if the KPZ is the same thing, why is that MBT so much better? Well, anybody that's played it, it's less armored than this vehicle, which means it can go a lot faster, it's lower, more mobile, it can hide. This can't. And that's why it's not a favorite amongst players. It's a unique vehicle in terms of how it looks, how it was op deployed in Vietnam, and how it operated in the real world, but in Armored Warfare, it's very tricky. Wrong button. Sorry about that. Very tricky to kind of operate. And that's because of this massive weak spot on the top. Everybody knows who played the M60 series that the commander's cupola on top is an easy target armored warfare. But more importantly, this. Only 304 millimeters of effective steel armor on the front, and it goes all the way down as low as 191, 182 at the very bottom. This is why this tank can't do it. It's supposed to get up into the face of enemies, 
face hug them and shoot down into them using this massive gun. And the turret's made to do that. It's curved, you can angle down, but just head on. Only 122 millimeters on the turret ring. Now it's because it is an M60, it's well angled on the side. I mean, you get 1500 plus armor all on the side, but the cupola, it's going to be relatively open, and then these plates are going to be completely open. You're going to be able to, if you're angled, if you over, uh, before I say over angle, let me just make something very clear. This is the only angle where that armor is effective. So by over angling, it would be any normal player playing this tank at all. Because as soon as you deviate even just a little bit, this whole side starts to open up to other MBTs. And then of course, it's completely defenseless at all angles, except for if you're coming off a 90, maybe, maybe an 87 degree angle at your target. So if your target's straight down and this is 90, you're going to want to go right there. Otherwise, it's completely defenseless. And because of that, this vehicle has no protection camouflage wise and armor wise when it's waiting for almost 13 seconds to reload and fire back an enemy and I've played a little bit of this vehicle in both PvP and PvE and one of the great things about it in my opinion is that it's consistent this will perform the same way it performs in PvE as it does in PvP the only difference is in PvE it will be more overpowered because you will be able to sustain a lot more hits because you're usually fighting lower tiers in PvE. But other than that, performance is the same. And that was a big thing with the OT-64. Is that in PvE, it obviously, the performance became better. Which it did, you know, it could not handle PvP games. It couldn't survive long. This vehicle's survivability is very low. You have to be very careful with it. And it you have to play it like you play the Sheridan. But it's a tank that is so much slower and so much bigger than the Sheridan that just saying that sounds as ridiculous and as horrible as it is. So not a fan favorite. It doesn't really go anywhere on the tech tree. You go straight to the Abrams, but if you notice, you can just circumvent. Now they change it. You can circumvent the M60A1 and go straight towards the Abrams through here. So you don't actually ever have to play this tank if you don't want to. And so a lot of people skip it, it's not for everybody, it's not really a great tank, but we're going to take it into a couple of PvP games and a couple of PvE games to give you a better feel how it operates in the battlefield, and just to sort of shed light on why it's hated so much, and is there a way to play it better, is there a way to make it work? So stay tuned for those, and thank you so much for watching. Starting with the PvP gameplay today. We're defending on assault on pipelines, and the reason this is so funny to me is that I was just here in the same tank, recorded a pretty bad gameplay, trying to work out how to use the M68-2 in, in PvP on the assaulting side. So now I get to pay my defeat forward in this game. And so, like I said, as you can see, you get spotted pretty easily in these vehicles. And another thing I forgot to mention... I, yep, got the splash. Is that one, you get splash damage in this tank when you use heat. Or, not heat, but high explosive. So, that's what I primarily play, and I play it just for... The, um, that splash damage. So the NM-142 on the enemy team, he's sniping way in the back, he gets two very nice shots on me for a total of 1800 damage. And so there's no defense against top down, obviously this is a um, Cold War style tank that they just didn't have that. And there's no way for me to counter missiles. So for the rest of the game I kind of play the sniping role, which is what I said not to do in this tank. But I found out over the couple of games I played before this that I was wrong. Given proper aim time, it can snipe to some degree like the Sheridan can. Also, another thing I forgot to mention, I can't remember the name of it now, it does get a retrofit that increases mobility. So because of that, you can actually make this tank an effective sniper slash more mobile, more mid-range tank. And that goes into my larger part of the review. As you see this gameplay, 
which is mostly just me waiting, so I apologize. Not very entertaining, just looking for hits. Uh, the aim time does take a little bit to get on target, and you will miss. The splash makes up for it, even though I'm only doing about 100, 150 damage per splash. It's not terrible. It's not a terrible tank. And while I didn't love playing it, I didn't hate it either. You'll get to see that it's effective at its job. So right now I'm just kind of looking around, wondering what my teammates are going to do, what plays are they going to make. They're trying to be, make an offensive. At least one guy was. And none of the team's going for it because there's no need to. The enemy's going to have to come for us. But if you see in the latter part of this game, it's not always the case, and they do tend to hide and dig in. And so it's just kind of a waiting, which is why I don't like assault too much. It's just a lot of waiting. Normally, I would try to move up closer to where my team is fighting right now along the five line, like B5 there, and then C5 where the Abrams is, just to kind of provide some support. But I can't really do that because I'm on about a third of my hit points, even less than a third. So. Yeah, I'd say that's a good fourth or fifth of my hit points, and so all I can do is just play the role of sniper. I'm watching the T72, trying to see if the AMs will give me anything. Always looking at what the NM142 is, which is where you just saw him from that top left of the screen over there, is right where he's at. And I didn't find out until the end of the game that he's actually in the open the entire time. That vehicle just has that good camouflage. He never actually gets behind the rock, he never pulls behind the ridge line. He's just sitting there sniping down on our team, which is kind of annoying. And so, just sitting and waiting, that's all I can do. I decided to move up because I got bored, and I'm getting bored just talking about it. But we have a lead over their team, and it's time to kind of take the advantage and push the advantage a little bit. Now, I'm going around the long way because I don't want to get spotted again by the NM-142. I'm always worried that the Abrams there is going to pop over the ridge and try to attack me. So I'm waiting for my fellow MBT to so kind of just attack the Abrams. Just go for it. The Abrams fires. I'm trying to take the advantage of the reload. Go for it, but I don't have the depression and I'm afraid that the NM-142 will spot me. And he's already hammering. Uh, my teammate there, and he just got another. Or the Abrams just shut down. Our Abrams. And you'll see a premature target, target lock because lock, I'm worried about there's the NM142. I'm trying to aim at him and get a shot out while he completely ignores me. Great. And fires on my team. Get a hit on the gun. Normally that would destroy a target cannon, lock. but it didn't destroy the Abrams. A higher roll than normal, 255 for that module damage. And then here, 292, another high roll. We dodge a shot there from the NM142, and so I get freaked out. Pull back really far. Now I'm just waiting for him to get spotted again. He's on a reload, so it's unlikely. But if we get lucky, he fires, and that is why I play this tank. That was a direct hit. When you get a direct hit with. Um, HE rounds, you will do a crazy amount of damage in this tank. I just hit him for 939. And that one hit brings us up to 1700. So nothing stellar for a tier 5 main battle tank. That's kind of what I'll get into when we look at the post game stats here. Is this tank does not perform as well as some of its contemporaries, but it doesn't do terrible either. I think the rest of this game, I'm just hunting for the T-72. I can't really remember what happens. Yeah, there's just going to be a hunt for the T-72. And if I remember correctly, he's hiding on our spawn point, which is interesting to say the least. I don't know how long that's going to take. While well, I'm watching this replay, I'm watching it and recording at the same time so it's kind of live for me I'll get into some of the characteristics that I really do like about this vehicle and a big one is that it is much more mobile than I thought and with the added retrofit that uh, is even more amplified and 
it hits targets. Now, I use heat in my next PvP game to zero effect, and then I load missiles in one of them. But I don't actually end up using them. And so, none of the ammunition really kind of... Just like the Sheridan. A lot of players do use the Sheridan as its intended role, which is a missile launching tank. Well, that's fine. I personally don't. I don't have a great success with the Shangri-La missile system, which is the one they use. It doesn't have a crazy amount of penetration or it doesn't do a crazy amount of damage. And the heat rounds don't either. And that's what makes this tank sort of special compared to the Sheridan, is that it does get the option of a little bit more improved heat rounds. But even a little bit more improved is not good enough to be significant. And so one of the things that I like, but also hate, is that it uses HG just as effectively as the Sheridan in terms of splash damage and winging and shots as you saw we hit that Abrams because we could I could predict where it was going based off of the Sheridan and so I was able to give the Abrams enough lead to actually get that splash damage and so here we find him I don't think I'm able to hit him before the game ends and I'm not but the heat the HG in this tank is consistent is where I was going with that it's consistent so you'll be doing about a hundred splash every every time you pull it out and that's why I stick with it is because it's not a lot of damage but I know I'm gonna be doing at least a hundred every time so post game stats 1700 damage pretty good in this tank no awards nothing stellar it puts us at almost the last place in the team because that's just kind of where it's gonna be at most of the time there's no way to really play this tank and make it like crazy effective which is my assessment of it but that doesn't make it bad as you'll see in this gameplay it can defend itself and i have the missiles loaded but i don't use them here this is just a normal game it's an encounter game on um reactor so in reactor my favorite place to go is the eye line the i2 and i4 and the reason for that is you can use those cooling towers to kind of hide your tank's silhouette, avoid being spotted, and use it as good cover against enemies who might be camping G1 or G2. And there's always enemies camping that position. It will either be a TD or an AFV. In this game, I think it's a couple of MBTs, which is kind of funny, but they were up there. So that's what I would recommend, however, it's just as effective going the other way. And so there's a good chance that's what I'm kind of cautious about while I'm letting the AMX-40 go on ahead of me for it, is because usually the faster tanks and even some AFVs from the enemy team will swing around and meet us here and there'll be a little skirmish. And this is not the type of tank that can deal with that. It can't handle any type of close quarters fighting. While it will do a lot of damage once, just like the Sheridan, you'll be stuck in a reload for almost 13 seconds and you're going to get cut apart you don't have the armor to do it so I just let him go and move all the way up while I just move up to the second cooling tower and kind of wait out We've already there's a what is that a Magoth was up there and Identify. I'm trying to remember I'll see what other tank is up there an AMX no that's the Magoth still the Magoth I believe there's an AMX up there who hits us but this is how I would play this here. Now, in the case Identify. of the Starship, every time you spot a tank, even though you do have the nice advantage of being behind cover, you will get spotted. It's just a thing. So you hit him through the front, direct hit, 635. Or 53, sorry. That's not bad. I try. He just, That was amazing. I couldn't believe we bounced a 90mm round. And so now it's pretty much just waiting, trying not to let my bloom get too big, trying to keep my shots centered, my camera centered, so that way when the time comes and they pop out, I can hit them. Now, I didn't take that shot because he's moved backwards too quick for HP to hit. That was only 135. I tried to trade with him, which works because he doesn't. Have, he's not able to hit us. Identify. But that's kind of where... It gets a little inconsistent depending on how fast you fire is important because he rounds have a really low shell velocity so if you get if you line up a really good shot and fire by the time your shell actually hits the tank he could have made micro adjustments to his vehicle 
like he had done when we did it and move his mantlet towards us and our shell just went straight into the mantlet and only did 135 instead of the 600 and he was able to just nail us for 522 right in the front no contest and so because of that you're not going to want to rely entirely on making accurate shots and that's again why I use high explosive rounds don't aim for lower glacis or don't aim for a turret ring you're not gonna hit it most of the time because the shell will either move too slowly and the tank will have moved by then or it will bounce and go somewhere else into a ricochet all you want to do is just hit low try to shoot up and under so hit the tracks do what you do in your share to aim for the tracks aim for lower plates not directly but like almost at the ground and wait you know just let the he go up into it and as you can see there i get greedy because i really want that tank destroyed because i can destroy him in one shot but hit a rock i'm not able to get over there fast enough and so i decided to change my mind and go support the guys on cap and see if i can get a few more damage points that way um that's another thing in this tank that i personally don't enjoy is that i always feel like I'm not doing as much damage as I could like there's always a huge wealth of potential damage I'm just not taking and that's because in most cases you're not able to get there you're not able to fire when it's an opportune time to do. and that that has nothing to do with the M60A2 I mean that could be any tank depending on when you do it that's just how the game is timed even in certain matches you just miss shots no, nothing reflects on the tank just personally because of how fast the reload is and I can feel it in the Sheridan too I feel like I'm just not making enough I'm not doing enough I'm not hitting enough but it's it will you know it's plenty it's plenty in all honesty at tier 5 the damage that this thing does is fine I'm just used to higher tiers, I'm used to AFVs, and so this thing obviously can't compare to any of those. Uh, I'm going to try to hit this 272. It's a hit for 257, which means we bounced it into his gun. Anytime you see a hit from high explosive, this goes for the Sheridan as well, where it's like a really low roll, like, oh, you only did 100, only did 200. It's really splash damage. It means the shell hit at a high angle, whereas if you were shooting heat, it would just say high angle failed to fuse, and it's a no pen. It means it hit there and exploded, and you got residual damage for it, which is, again, why I love using high explosive in these tanks, because they're not accurate enough to nail precise shots. And so it's better to just get a little bit splash damage, like when you're playing artillery in PvE, than to aim in. But can do things like this get a shot through the bridge for 400 damage that shot i didn't think i was gonna make usually just pops down into the bridge but we did it and i think that's it yeah that's the end of the game so 1500 damage had good support we capped a little bit did a whole lot more than we did in the previous gameplay but even so in this vehicle that's not enough to make the difference we, we get about 2,000 XP, which is great. We make less money than the last game. And I don't want to say that directly correlates to damage, or it might. However, we're still almost bottom of the team. So again, I can say, it's, me it's mediocre, but consistent. This is my PvP game. I this is Anvil. I kind of started in the middle because I forgot to hit record. So you miss the first few seconds, and also I don't really like recording the intros anyway, because you can't really talk over those. Um, I can't remember what happens in this battle too well. It showcases more of how light we are for this vehicle is, but I do play this tank super aggressive in PvE, and that's because I know I'm going to be able to penetrate more shots in PvE and playing against lower tiers. And for me, personally, PvE is just a competition. It's not so much a game as it is I am just competing with the people on my team to get the most damage. Now, obviously, I'm not competing with them in such a die-hard way that I'm going to steal stuff from them, but 
I just know they can shoot faster than me, they can penetrate more than I can, and so I'm just trying to land high explosive shots They're onto off. soft armor targets. Identify. Off. And that's pretty much all I do. It, I hit. aim for the engine, I, I end up hitting him in the middle for 484, which I already hit a scorpion for 490, and I hit another scorpion at the beginning of the game for 900. And so, we're doing the same amount of damage as we would in PvP. But we are able to do a lot more of it, and that's why I like this tank. Its play style doesn't really change in PvE like some tanks do. Identify. It just stays the same, oh, and you just reap the rewards of seeing more soft skin see. vehicles. 530, another mid roll for high explosive. We were able to hit him in the side. That was the Type 80. Oh. I believe that's a tier 4 Chinese tank. So, just moving around Anvil, trying to get good positions to fire on the enemies without sticking myself out too far, without overexposing. Which, I forget they hit us hard. what happened. Yeah, like this. A swing fire just hit us, and they hit us twice, oh. and can't spot them, so I just pop smoke and try to move back. I have no way of spotting that swing fire. And so that would be an example of how Identify. not to use oh, this tanks camouflage. And we miss him because he's on the move. So this little clip just highlights don't move up in this tank, don't be aggressive. Good. But there are more stands out don't there lose and sight of just how you know how to play it. Hit that scorpion for 893, another good hit. And just wait for opportunities like that. Like in PvE, there's never a reason to not wait. And 907, another high roll for this tank. There's no reason not to wait for those opportunities. You will get them in PvE. There will be enough vehicles to go around. There will be enough soft skin vehicles. Just hang in the back and wait for them. 941 on that way, next 10 another good roll and so you'll see that now that I'm pulling back I'm playing more reserved completely staying in cover for a whole reload just just good tank play one shot that the likes of Hansa for 947 you'll see that my damage starts going up almost by 1000 per hit and that's because I started playing the tank right I got over myself got over Oh, I gotta win. Oh, I gotta do more damage. This tank has a high roll of 1100. I want to see that in the game. Remember that and just started playing just to play. And when you do that in this tank, it's rewarding. You can't be too aggressive in it, but it doesn't deserve the reputation of being really terrible. I don't know if they change, if, I don't know if Armored Warfare changed any characteristics of this vehicle. Uh, in the last update, I doubt it. I didn't see anything about it. I didn't see any news about it changing. And so, unlike the OT64, which I did yesterday, I think the stigma with this tank just comes from the awkwardness of having a light tank set up in a main battle. Tank. And I think that, yeah, that shot kills me. So we still did 8,100 damage. Not bad. Still got killed by the swing fire. That will always happen to low tier. Swing fires are a plague. But got 56,000 to 2,000 XP. And it puts us second place. So in PvE, this tank is actually quite good. All in all, I just think that this tank has a bad reputation because players don't give it or didn't give it enough chance because it didn't go anywhere. Now that it's a progression tank, I think a lot more people are going to play it. I think a lot more people will see that its reputation is unwarranted, and that's actually quite a good vehicle. Anyway, if you like this video, throw up a like, or maybe subscribe if you want to see more of this type of content. My next vehicle showcase, per these two, the IT64. Worst vehicles in Armored Warfare and doing a review on them, and just letting you know how I play them or better ways to play them or what I think about them. So if you have a vehicle that you particularly hate or dislike or think shouldn't be in the game or you just don't know how to play it effectively, put it in the comment section below. 
let me know and I'll do a review on it. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you next time.